today we are going starting a series of lectures on hematology right and we'll start with the red blood cells especially the most common investigations which are done in cases of anemias or polycythemias right so let's start discussing about red blood cells and related investigations the important terms which you are supposed to know right the important terms medical terms which you are supposed to know are number one you should know what is meant by packed cell volume or it is also called hematocrit hematocrit you should be clear what it is after the lecture number two you must know what is the concept of hemoglobin concentration hemoglobin concentration number three you must be clear about red cell count right after the lectures you must be clear in all these terms which i'm writing there then you must be knowing what is meant by yes you must be knowing what is meant by mean corpuscular volume mean corpuscular volume okay someone is so intelligent he told that it should be called mcv mean corpuscular volume then you must be also clear about mean corpuscular yes very good hemoglobin which can also be called mc H mean corpuscular hemoglobin then by the end of the lecture we should have very clear concept what is meant by mean corpuscular yes mean corpuscular hemoglobin concentration ration right and then we will that is of course mean corpuscular hemoglobin concentration mc hc right and then another term which is used now these days that is yes there is one term you will tell me what is rwd yes okay rdw Yes, R D W. What is this? Anyone who knows about it, never heard of it. Red cell distributive width. I will explain it later. What is really meant by that, and what is the importance of this term? Red cell. Yes, distributive width. right so how many of you are clear about all these terms raise your hands i should remind everyone has two hands you can raise only one anyone who is clear about all these terms okay someone who is sure about first six terms anyone yes there are a lot of young doctors you have, you know what are the differences in these terms what are the importance of them because still when we'll be moving forward there will be more terms which will be made clear to you for example by the end of the lecture you must be clear about what is meant by micro cytic yes microcytic corpuscles or red blood cells microcytic cells then yes normo cytic cells then there should be you should be clear about yes macrocytic very good macro cytic red blood cells and then she should be also clear what is meant by normochromic normochromic yes normos chromic cells hypochromic cells 
red blood cells and yes hyper chromat i think if after the lecture you are really clear about these 13 terms i think we have done the job of today right so let's start here discussing and during this discussion i will explain every term right let's suppose we take a blood from a person from his vein and we put into this tube let's start studying this situation suppose this is a container and in this container we take blood from a person and we put blood into this container right suppose blood is up to this we anticoagulate the blood we anticoagulate the blood so that blood does not coagulate right we anticoagulate the blood and then centrifuge it so naturally what will happen if blood is anticoagulated and put into a tube and then there is centrifugation it is rotated naturally cells will come down and plasma will remain up good you know these things excellent so what happens the cells will settle down so once you have centrifuge let's suppose it was one unit blood one unit blood right after the centrifugation when you let the cells settle down in a healthy person this uh, this is the area or volume which is occupied by the cells an area which is above that that is occupied by cell free yes plasma is that right now these are the cells this all is mostly red, red blood cell there are some cells here we call it buffy coat this is actually a very thin layer which is made by white blood cells right and above that all this is yes all this is plasma we start our concept from very basic you have taken a blood from a person anticoagulated the blood put into a tube centrifuged you have reduced a cell to the bottom and plasma is at the top is that right now let us suppose if this was one unit blood as you know blood blood is made of what it is having plasma in the cells so naturally cells are less than one unit usually in a healthy person about 40 to 50 percent are cells 40 to 50 percent of the volume of the blood is occupied by cells and they are mostly red blood cells is that right so we can say that this out of this one unit all this is present here let us suppose it is 0.45 one unit was like this it was one unit volume out of that one unit volume 0.45 is occupied by, by red blood cells when they are packed together when they are packed together then we can say 0.45 is the volume occupied by the red blood cells when they are packed within the blood let me repeat it what i'm saying that let's suppose okay let's make it one liter if this is one liter blood don't remove one liter from anyone it's just an example one liter blood with centrifuge and settle the cells out of one liter how much will be occupied by red blood cell in this diagram out of one liter it is 450 450 ml or we can say 45 percent of the total volume of the blood right so what we can say or we can say that total volume of the blood which is occupied by red blood cells once they are packed together right this packed together this is 0.45 liter of the cells per liter of the blood that in one liter of the blood 0.45 liter is the 
packed volume of red blood cells when red cells are packed this is very important I'm repeating again and again when they are packed so what is this packed volume of red blood cells is that right now this is 0.45 simply when liter by liter or we simply say 0.45 even you can put if it is 1 ml then you will say ml by ml that in 1 ml 0.45 ml is the volume occupied by the red blood cells when they are packed together. So this volume is called packed P packed cell volume. What is this? Packed cell volume. For next time when someone say what is packed cell volume? PCV. He is talking about the volume in the blood occupied by the red blood cells when red blood cells are packed together. Is it difficult? It's so easy. Pack cell volume. Is that right? Okay. Thank you for understanding that. <laughs> now, some people don't want to call it like, you know, there are always lazy people. They don't want to call it three word packed cell volume. So they introduced a different term for the same concept. And our young doctor gets confused. The other term for the same thing is hematocrit. Packed cell volume is actually the other name for hemato crit. So what is hematocrit? If I say my friend has hematocrit 0.4, it means in his blood 40% of the volume is occupied by red blood cell. If I say there is a person who has very severe anemia, I say his hematocrit is 0.3. If I say my friend has, we take a blood sample from a patient and report come, hematocrit is 0.3. You can understand very clearly that in this person's blood, out of one unit, 30% of the volume of the blood is occupied by the red blood cells when they are packed together. That's it. So I hope you are clear about these terms. Okay. Thank you for understanding it. Now, I will make it a little more clear because I want to talk about other terms also. So let's suppose I make the container here again. Let's suppose that here is packed cell volume. Okay. This was our total blood volume, right? we decided that packed cell volume in our patient was yes 0.45 liter per liter is that right and this was made of mainly by which cells red blood cells let's suppose i'm putting the red blood cells here i'm just putting few red blood cells here Now, I have made only 5 red blood cells in this diagram, right? Actually, this, there are not 5 red blood cells, there are a lot of red blood cells. But these 5 red blood cells in our diagram are representing all the red blood cells. Of course, packed cell volume consists of what? Consists of red blood cells. Now, when we talk about that this is our packed cell volume, within this volume we can talk about other things. Because packed cell volume only tell us that out of the full unit of the blood, 45% is occupied by red blood cell. But someone can come and ask, okay, this is the volume occupied by all the red blood cell. But what is the number of red blood cell? Because there are many, many red blood cells which are put together and then this volume is occupied. So it means we need one more term. That in a given patient, Number one, we should know what is the hematocrit. Hematocrit means packed cell volume. Plus, you can also ask what is the red cell count. Red cell count means that in one unit of blood, what is the number of RBCs? And of course, in one unit of the blood, whatever is the number of RBCs, they are put together making a volume which is called packed cell volume. Or we can reverse the statement that within the packed cell volume, we should know what is the number of RBCs. Is that right? 
Now, first normal. Let's suppose our person is normal. In a normal person, in 1 ml of blood, let's suppose this is 1 ml of blood. In 1 ml of blood, how much is the PET cell volume? 0.45. Is that right? Of course, 0.45 ml. If, if we are not talking about liters, now we are talking about unit of 1 milliliter. But how? In 1 ml, in 1 drop of blood which is just 1 ml, what is the number of red blood cells? Yes, my friend. You never had time to count it. Yes. Anyone, I am asking, if you take 1 ml blood from me, if I am healthy, out of that 1 ml blood, 0.45 ml will be pack cell volume. In that 0.45 ml of the blood, how many number of RBCs are usually packed together in a healthy person? You don't know it. Yes. 5,000 to 6,000 to 10,000. Believe me, everyone who has such a number of RBCs in 1 ml of blood will never take this lecture because he will be dead. Even person who has only 5,000 to 10,000 red blood cell in his blood will never come to your attention. His report will never come. He must be already dead. Yes. Yeah, millions he is talking about. You are very right. As far as red blood cells are concerned, you are a millionaire. In every 1 ml of blood, in every 1 ml of the blood, you have approximately 5 million RBCs. In 1 ml of the blood, there are approximately 5 million red blood cells. Of course, males have a little more and females have a little less. We will talk about those variations later. First, I am putting a basic general concept. So, it means when we are talking about red cell count, when we are talking about red cell count, what we are trying to talk? We are talking in a given volume, what is the number of red blood cells and we just discussed in a healthy person in 1 ml of the blood, there are approximately 5 million red blood cells. So, in a way, red cell count is the number of red blood cells in a unit volume of blood. Is that right? So now, if we continue our discussion with this thing, let's suppose a very small tube and this is total, okay, how much you, you want? 1 ml, 100 ml, 1 liter tube. I leave it up to you. 1 liter. Who wants 1 liter? It's not Coca-Cola. My friend, it's blood. Don't draw, draw it more than 100 ml here. Okay. Let's suppose this unit is 100 ml. Now again, I will just see you have developed the concept or not. If it is 100 ml blood from a normal person, how many ml will be the packed cell volume? Approximately? Listen carefully. If this is 100 ml blood from me, in 100 ml of my blood, RBCs will make occupy how much volume? 45 ml. Now I am talking about volume, not number. This is what I want to put in your mind. These two terms are different. Is that right? So, and in this one, I told you in 1 ml of the blood, how many you have RBCs? 5 million in 1 ml. And in 100 ml, you will have 500 million. Good, your match is good, right? So, it means in this case, if it is 100 ml blood, 45 ml is the packed cell volume or hematocrit. Is that right? 0.45 liter per liter. And what will be the red cell count? What will be the red cell count? In 1 ml, it is 5 million. In 1 ml, it is 5 million? I am not good in math. Okay, thank you. So it is 5 million. It is in 1 ml. 100 ml? into 100. So now you understand there is a difference of the concept of packed cell volume or hematocrit and there is a different concept of red cell count. Why is this so important to understand? Listen carefully. 
sometimes what happen a person has very low packed cell volume suppose someone is severely anemic his packed cell volume may be very low let's suppose this was me normal there is another person my friend and unfortunately he has anemia and still i have one more friend unfortunately that person also has anemia now when we took 100 ml blood from both of them the packed cell volume was only 25.25 and here it is also 0.25 it means their red total red cell mass is reduced rather than 45% in the blood their red cell mass is or red cell packed cell volume is only 25 is that right but look if i say this person has larger rbcs very large size rbcs and this person has very small rbcs when rbcs are large larger than normal we call them macrocytic macrocyte when rbcs are significantly larger than normal we call them macrocytes and when rbcs are smaller than normal we call them microcyte now look this is a very important concept these two people both of them have anemia but one has an anemia with macrocyte other has anemia with microcyte and if both of them have equal packed cell volume do you think red blood cell number can be equal no you are intelligent isn't it there are two people both of them i have severe anemia both of them have very reduced but equal packed cell volume packed cell volume is equal on both side but one has larger rbcs other has smaller rbcs so it means rbcs if packed cell volume is equal it means same volume of the blood is occupied by the red blood cells in both patients but here given rbc individual rbc is larger their individual rbc is smaller it is just like all of them are like grape fruits and these are like small lemons so naturally if grape fruits and lemons are having the same packed cell volume then number of grape fruits will be less and lemons will be more. more so what i wanted to tell you that just knowing the packed cell volume is not enough you should also know that in a specific patient a given packed cell volume is having what red cell count here red cell count will be less here red cell count will be more even though hematocrit is equal am i clear no problem it can also happen that you come across two patients both have both of them have equal number of rbcs red blood cell count is equal look another example there are two friends here right number of red blood cell is equal but one has larger red blood cell than other has smaller red blood cells this person has smaller red blood cell and other has larger red blood cells for here if number of the red blood cell is equal then person with larger red blood cell will have more packed cell volume and person with smaller red blood cell will have less packed cell volume do i need to explain it further or you understand it so what i wanted to put in your mind that when you look at a person he has low hematocrit or normal hematocrit it is not enough to have the real concept of his red blood system we should not only know that in a given volume of blood what is the packed volume right of occupied by rbcs we should also know per unit of the blood what is the count of rbcs is that right any problem here claro okay now we go to the normal we are now go back and start working with the normal person now you know the concept of packed cell volume and you know the concept of red cell count and now i want to give a concept of hemoglobin concentration is that right because they are interrelated but somewhat different concepts now what is the fine tuned fine tuning in the concept let me do it for you
let's suppose we have taken one unit of blood from a person and out of that this is his packed cell volume let's suppose normal person it is 0.45 normal person has a range but let's suppose in this given normal person packed cell volume is 0.45 and red cell count is red cell count is yes 5 millions yes 5 millions per ml is that right now I will draw the RBCs here just 5 red blood cells here I need to really okay so it's a very simple diagram right this was a tube and plasma is up to here it was 100 and here it was 45 is that clear now these are of course in such amount of blood there are not five rbcs Actually, I have drawn in the diagram 5 RBCs which are representative of all RBCs. For example, if it is 1 ml, then there should be 5 million RBCs, then 1 RBC is representing 1 million red blood cells, right? Now look, within these RBCs, there is hemoglobin. Let, I take one RBC and put it here. This is one red blood cell. I will make a section of this red blood cell here and I will show you the hemoglobin. Now, hemoglobin is present within these red blood cells. Every red blood cell has some hemoglobin. Is that right? Now, when hemoglobin is present over here, so naturally all these red blood cells are the bags of hemoglobin red blood cells do not have any nucleus now this is hemoglobin now actually red blood cells are not 100% full of hemoglobin this is very important red blood cells are not red blood cell is a bag of hemoglobin but this bag is not 100% full about one third of it is loaded with hemoglobin. Is that right? So it means why normally a red blood cell fluid has only one third of it full of hemoglobin because this is the maximum metabolic capacity of cells to make the hemoglobin in a given RBC. So usually when RBC synthesis is normal, the maximum amount of hemoglobin which can be packed during the erythropoiesis. The maximum amount of hemoglobin which can be packed in one red blood cell is about one third of its volume. It means one RBC is one third full of what? Hemoglobin. Is that right? Now we come back. Packed cell volume you know. Red cell count you also know. Is that right? Now I will repeat the things. In a given unit of blood, all volume occupied by the red blood cell once they are packed is packed cell volume or hematocrit. And in a given unit of blood, the total number of RBC is called red cell count. But we did not talk about hemoglobin. Every red blood cell is having hemoglobin. Sometimes we talk that in one unit of blood, what is the total percentage of hemoglobin? For example, if it is 100 ml blood, we took from patient up to here was 100 ml blood. Then there were 45 ml volume occupied by RBCs. Hemoglobin is present within the red blood cells. Can hemoglobin be more than the total volume of red blood cells? 
No, of course not. So it means whatever is packed cell volume, hemoglobin has to be less than that. And I told you in a healthy person, when there is healthy normal, good erythropoietic process is going on, usually a normal red blood cell can be maximum packed with hemoglobin up to equal to its 33% of its total volume. Now, right? You are understanding it? Now, it is total 45 ml. If I say in a healthy person, you have taken 100 ml blood, out of 100 ml blood, packed cell volume is 45 and one third of that is full of hemoglobin. What should be the amount of hemoglobin? 15 gram. Look, this if I put all RBCs together, it become a bag of RBC. Is that right? If total bag of RBC is how much volume? 45. If I say this bag is one third full, then what should be the amount of hemoglobin? Right? 33% of RBC, but 15% of the total blood. You are understanding? Total blood was how much? 100 ml. 45 ml was what? Packed cell volume. 45 ml packed cell volume was containing one third amount of hemoglobin. So 45 ml was containing how much hemoglobin? 15 gram. So out of 100 ml, there was only 15 gram what hemoglobin. So in a contain one amount of blood which was 100 unit, only 15 unit was hemoglobin. So we can say if out of 100, 15 is only hemoglobin. So what is the concentration of hemoglobin in blood? 15%, right? So this is the concept of hemoglobin. Concentration in a healthy person, in males a little more and females a little less, but let's suppose 15% or simply we call it if 15 gram per 100 ml deciliter or 150 gram per liter. Is it difficult to understand? Clear? So three terms are clear now. That a patient come and you want to make some study that patient has anemia or not. What type of anemia is there? First of all, you must know what is the packed cell volume. Number two, you should know what is the red cell count. Number three, you should know what is the hemoglobin concentration. Sometimes what happens? That there are two patients, they have same red cell count. It is quite possible, there are two patients, there is one patient, this is another patient and both of them are having, there is packed cell volume, oh sorry, full blood, here is packed cell volume, is that right? Both of them are having same packed cell volume and both of them are having same, what, size of RBCs and count of RBCs. Now, in both cases, packed cell volume is same. In both cases, in both cases, RBC count is also same. But here RBCs are less juicy. They are under hemoglobinized. They are having less hemoglobin per RBC. And let's suppose their RBCs are very, very juicy. Yeah. They are like oranges. Very, very juicy. His. Yeah. Right? Well hemoglobinized RBCs. Now, packed cell volume is same. Red cell count is same. But do you think hemoglobin concentration can be same? No. So it means that is an independent variable. You should not know that what, number one, you should know in a given person, what is the total volume of the blood occupied by red blood cell. Secondly, you should know in a given volume, what is the number of RBCs. Then you should know what is the juiciness of RBC, mean how well or how poorly they are hemoglobinized. Is that right? So when we talk about this juiciness of RBCs, is that right? We are talking about content of 
hemoglobin right so in all it is quite possible that there are two patients both of them have packed cell volume 0.4 both of them have red cell count 5 million per ml but one has hemoglobin 15 gram other has hemoglobin 12 gram so in one case there is better hemoglobinization per RBC in second case there is poor hemoglobinization per RBC it means in first case hemoglo hemoglobin was 15 gram in second case hemoglobin was 12 grams you are understanding it so we should have three basic study when someone come to you and we start talking about RBCs and hemoglobin business number one what is the packed cell volume number two this packed cell volume is how well packed with what number of RBCs then what is the hemoglobin concentration given amount of blood right so now we will have a break I hope you are clear about these three terms these are three basic terms once you know these three basic concept about a given patient then you can derive these concepts all these I will talk about them after the break